Julia Martin Lefebvre, to what extent does the crisis encourage us to reconsider our relationship to nature? We have just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day. The poster for that celebration is now famous with its simple message reminding us that the enemy is us. While the crisis we are living now is a threat to human health, it is a close relative of the other crises we have been talking about for years, the crisis of climate change and that of the loss of biodiversity, which are both threats to our health and to the health of our planet. It's very possible that this epidemic came to us directly from the natural world, which we human beings with our huge appetite to occupy more and more land have disturbed. We need urgently to reconcile human beings with nature, which gives us essential services for our health, food and water, and for our ability to fight climate change. In a recent report of the think tank More in Common, focused on France, it was clearly shown that whatever differences exist between people in this country, the protection of the environment is a strongly shared value. I have no doubt that this would be the same in most countries. However, there is still a huge gap between this understanding and the actions that our governments are taking to ensure that our behavior is such that nature can continue to do its good work. Do you think there will be a change after this crisis or the desire to recover our economy will take us back to business as usual? So I'm really hoping that we're capable of learning important lessons from this experience which for the first time is being shared by all countries, whether developed or the so-called developing countries. We're now truly all in the same boat. And going back to our old ways, once a vaccine is in place for this pandemic will not be enough. I think we have now understood that human beings depend on each other and depend on a healthy planet on which we and future generations can continue to thrive. We have, after all, been talking about this for 50 years. Governments and the private sector must take this seriously and rapidly agree with each other that measures which are well known must now be put into place. We have now demonstrated that we are capable of dealing with a crisis effectively with energy and speed. This is really good news. So if as a result of this shared crisis, we can learn to behave more generously with each other and toward the planet, The pain of this pandemic will have been worth it. And we can look forward to celebrating many more Earth Days ahead. Julien Martin Lefebvre, what solutions would you suggest to avoid returning to an environmentally devastating economy after the crisis, which would finally ruin all the efforts already made? Thank you for this question. So if we agree that the health of human beings is closely linked to the health of the planet, The changes we need must deal with these issues as if they were one. I know that this is a serious structural challenge, as we have always preferred to work on issues separately in neat silos, both at the national as well as the international level. So, for example, countries' health and agriculture ministries or the UN World Health or Food and Agricultural Organizations don't talk much with each other or to their environmental counterparts. The UN Convention dealing with biodiversity is totally separate from the Convention dealing with climate, as if nature needed to be packaged in departmental labels. And none of these pay enough attention to the social and economic impacts of the loss of nature or our health. We see this clearly at, in today's pandemic. So we must bring these issues together and finally stop working in silos. This will demand political courage, but I have no doubt that it will help us solve these interrelated challenges.